Integrated Genome Browser is a native desktop application that you install on your machine by going to our website, biovis.org, and clicking the Install IGBI button. Once you do that, IGBI will exist as a application on your computer, just like any other application, Microsoft Word or, or the Chrome web browser. However, a lot, a lot of applications, uh, you can enhance IGBI, you can add new features by installing apps for IGBI. So to do that, you simply just go to our website, biovis.org, and click Apps for IGBI, and this will take you to the IGBI App Store. And from here, you can search for and learn about the different apps that are available to install an integrated genome browser. To install an app, you can come here to this page. Once you've found an app that you're interested in, just click on the tile for the app. Here's an example. And if IGBI is currently running, you'll see a button here on the right that says install this app. So let's just see how this works. So here's Integrated Genome Browser running on the desktop. And we click install this app on the web page. And a little banner appears that lets us know that Protonote, this particular app, has been installed and we can go to IGBI to use it. Then you just click on IGBI. And notice that under the Tools menu, there's an option, Start Protonote. And this lets us know that the Protonote app is installed. Different apps will change the interface in different ways. Uh, most of them will add uh, a menu, new menu to the Tools menu. Others will add new functionality to the Annotation tab or the Graph Track track, the graph tab, there's a lot of different types of things that, that can be done. Protonote is classified as an, an application plugin or an application app, which means it essentially creates an entirely new, it adds an entirely new window or application to the IGBI program. So to demonstrate Protonote, let's go to a, a, a gene in the human genome. Meox1, that has an interesting um, pa uh, splicing pattern. I zoom out a little bit, and the, the gene models are, are kind of scrunched down by the sequence axis. Let's give them, let's, let's have them take over most of the vertical dimensions. So I click, I select the track, and then I choose a, a shortcut that optimizes the stack height uh, so that all the annotations are visible and, and taking up the maximum amount of room. So here they are. So this is a MIAX1, and it has uh, three gene models annotated to it, and, and they mostly differ with respect to the presence of an, of an exon near the three prime end of the gene model. So to use Protonote, what you do is you select gene models that have uh, protein translations associated with them. And that's what these tall boxes represent. These are the translated parts of the gene models. So we select those, and then we go to the Tools menu, and we choose a Start Protonote. And when we do that, a new, an entirely new window opens. And this is the Protonote window. And what we're seeing here is a different view of the gene models that we selected in IGBI itself, in the IGBI main window. Here we're seeing them from 5' prime to 3', prime, from left to right. And also the exons are color-coded according to their frame of translation. So if exons are in the same location in the sequence, with respect to the sequence, and, ha and have the same color, it means that they're producing the same protein sequence when translated. And if they have a different color, it means they're, they're in different frames and they're contributing different protein sequences to the protein, the translated protein. So to run Protonote, what Protonote does is it will send a query to a remote server um, asking the server to search for conserved motifs in the two, in the, uh, gene models on display. So to run it, we just click Run Protonote. 
run Interpret Scan, and we are shown a new screen where we can select the different libraries that we'd like to run. I'm happy with these selections, so I'll just click Run. And then what happens is uh, Protonote sends a request to a server at the European Bioinformatics Institute uh, and asks it to uh, run, search the protein sequences for the gene models against the, the libraries that I selected or that were selected for me in the previous step. Now this will take a few minutes. So while this hap is going on, I'm going to show you how you can interact with App Store within IGBY itself. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And we'll take a look at the Tools menu. And notice under the Tools menu, there is an option called Open App Manager. So if we do this, a new window appears. And this is the IGBY App Manager. This is a part of IGBY itself, but it looks very similar to the App Store um, in the sense that uh, it shows you different apps that you can install. And in this listing here on the left, any app that's already installed has a green circle next to it, or a filled in green circle. And also if you select an installed app, you'll notice that in the panel on the right, you have the option to uninstall it if, if you decide you don't want it anymore. Um, and also, if there is a new version of the app that's been released, you'll see um, a button inviting you to upgrade the app. Um, in this case, we've got the latest version, so the only option we have is to uninstall it. I'd also like you to I'd also like to point out that the text, the descriptive text, is is identical to what we saw on the website itself. So here is the App Store, and this text is, is simply just the same as what's in the Igby App Manager. Um, and then, of course, we've already installed it, so the App Manager or the App Store is letting us know that the app is installed. Let's move this out of the way. It looks like Protonote has finished. So let's take a look. So Protonote has finished the search. And if we would like to see um, the raw data for the search result, we can click on these links. And a web browser will open, showing us the, the results in text format that we got from Interpro scan. And notice that in the display, there's now a new item that represents a match to a homeobox domain containing motif or a homeobox domain. And of, also there's a link to the uh, Interpro scan record. So if you click this, your web browser will open and show you that. But what's important here is just to notice that the exon that we notice was sort of an alternative exon that's present in uh, one of the gene models and absent in the other, we can see that it encodes part of a homeobox domain. So it appears that the variant that's missing the exon probably is unable to bind to DNA. So this shows an example of how you can use Protonote, and it, which is an IGBY app, to understand the consequences of alternative splicing in this particular case.